Hi guys, welcome to Motivational Monday. Today, we are tracing dreams with my belovedly legendary soror, Miss Dina, who has her blog, I Am Confidently Me. Dina, do you wanna introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Dina, as Tira said. Um, yeah, so I created the blog, I Am Confidently Me, and um, by day, I'm an educator. And then in the evening, I guess, if you will, I have my blog. I also have a side business as an independent stylist with Stella and Dot. Um, and then I'm active in the sorority. So I keep myself very busy. <laughs> you know what's funny? I do not know a member of Sigma Gamma Rho who is not busy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's like an underlying part of our process. Like be busy, 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 busy. Um, but I don't know a Sora who isn't involved in a billion things at one time. Um, so I get it. And yeah. as an entrepreneur myself, I definitely understand that the, having the paycheck and then having the passions. Yeah. Ultimately, the goal is that your passion becomes your paycheck. But in the meantime, bills are real. Yes. <laughs> you gotta find that balance and do what you gotta do in, in the meantime. So I definitely can relate to that. Um, so let's jump right into it. Like, tell us a little bit about your story and if you can also include how you got started with blogging. Yeah, so I guess I'll start by, by saying that I'm still in the very beginning stages of this journey. Um, so I have been working in education for 10 years. I taught for eight years and then I've been an administrator for two and um you know, I started out as like the super teacher who like my whole life was education and teaching and, um, and I still love it, but I had reached a point where I got burnt out because it was like going to school and doing all of that, coming home and doing more, you know, the teaching is not a nine to five job. Um, and so then I kind of had transitioned in my life into realizing that I needed something else to do outside of work to just spark some creativity and something that wasn't what I was doing during the day so that I could have a little bit more balance. Um, so that was kind of like the, the beginning inklings of just knowing that like, oh, I need something else to do. But um, really it was life that kind of jumped me into this journey. So um, let me see. I started... Before I did blogging, um, my first side hustle, if you will, um, was joining Stella and Dot. And that was kind of birthed out of, um, I guess, going through a divorce, sort of. So I was married um, and I got divorced and I went on a, a healing trip, if you will, to Hawaii, which was amazing. Hawaii is like my favorite place in the world now. Okay. Love it. Um, okay. <laughs> yes. And so, and I think, and that was like my first time traveling alone. Um, so I've always traveled throughout my life, but never really by myself. And so after that experience, I was like really hit with the travel bug. And so then I was like, oh, I want to travel more. But then I'm like, oh, I need additional income in order to do that. Um, and so I was, was just kind of going through like, okay, you know, I do, you know, make a a, a good living in my daytime job, but I also at the time was living in DC and rent is very high there and, and oh. whatnot. So um, I started thinking about like, okay, so what else can I do? What do I like to do? Kind of going through that whole, um, you know, self-discovery or whatnot. So I found a product that I ended up really liking. I realized that like, I've always been into jewelry and accessories um, ever since I was a little girl. So I said, okay, I really like this product. Let me try, you know, selling it and whatnot. So I've been doing that for, I think, three years now. And, and then that kind of sparked in me getting more into social media. Like, I've always been into social media. I'm someone who, who you know, <laughs> yeah, it is. Like, I used to love scrapbooking. And um, I kind of look at social media as like a digital scrapbook. 
okay. where it's like I get to post all my pictures and keep all my memories so that you know when the new year rolls around I can scroll back through the whole year kind of a thing yeah. and so in doing that you know I just started learning more about like taking cute pictures and learning about style accounts and so I got really into Instagram and like posting you know a lot of style outfits and how I'm accessorizing my outfits and you know wearing my jewelry and all of that so then sorry, this is kind of like the long, it's, just, it's very random how I ended up here. Um, so I still do all of that um, on my Instagram account. And, but then I also started kind of being bit by the, you know, what would it be like to be a blogger? I really want to start a blog because I've always loved writing. Mm -hmm. And um, so like, I started thinking about like, okay, well, what do I want to blog about? You know, do I want to be a style blogger? But as I really was asking myself all of these questions when I think about like what my passion is I kind of I go back to education so it's mm -hmm. like a full circle thing mm -hmm. and I realized that what my passion is really is like helping people feel good about themselves because I think that the journey of confidence is a big part of my story and how you know I went from being a really insecure um you know woman who then went through, you know, this life challenge of getting married, getting divorced, really feeling low, and how I and how I pulled myself out of that to then become a confident woman who, you know, wants to like take pictures of herself and just be cute and feel good about how she looks and things like that. So that's kind of like the big circular explanation of how I ended up here with, um, you know, creating this blog, I am confidently me. So, yeah. No, thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, there were two things that stuck out to me the most. Um, one, you said you kind of fell into it because life happened. Yeah. And I think that's such a true statement that a lot of entrepreneurs probably can identify with simply because um, I believe that our our passions and our purpose in this world are almost inevitable. And so we try to go this route. We try to go that way. And you still kind of stumble there. Yeah. yeah. Um, I definitely resonated with that part. And then when you were saying how um, confidence is kind of where everything starts, um, I definitely agree. Um, a large part of Nicole's network is the self-love piece and mm -hmm. the self-confidence self and the self-appreciation. And I really believe like if you get that piece down, you can do anything because you believe in yourself. Yeah. And I've always been a talented person. I've always been an accomplished person. Mm -hmm. But if I didn't see myself in that light, it didn't matter. Yeah. 100%. And, you know, I think about that a lot in terms of our students and our kids growing up. I see it all the time at my school, right? Like, just the difference between a student who believes in themselves versus one who doesn't and how that plays out in the, in, in the classroom, you know? And I think, like, I've always been the educator who's, like, You know, for me, it's always been really important that I build a relationship with my kids and that when kids are working with me, I will always find a way to make them feel successful, mm -hmm. you know, because there we, I work, I work with a subgroup of students. Well, I work with students who are learning English as a second language. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot of challenges, you know, like sure. um, when English is not your first language and just, you know, trying to navigate um, the American school system and things like that. And so it's always been really important to me that even if we're tackling something that's challenging, I'm going to find like that level right where you're at so that it's going to feel achievable to you and that you're going to feel successful and feel good. Like that's the type of teacher that I've always been. Um, and so now it's like, I feel like I am kind of transforming that to like continue that work with kids, but also thinking about it in terms of adults too. You know, I think about how um, how much I needed to do that for myself because it, you know, especially I was kind of like the girl who grew up looking for it in other people. Absolutely. You know, I was always needing to validate who I was based on the opinion of others. And it took, 
you know, more than 20 years for me to get to a point where I had to learn how to validate myself. So, and I definitely um, can relate. Um, It wasn't until, so that's part of the beauty of my book, 23 and Finally Loving Me. Like Mm -hmm. the title really does speak to like I woke up on my 23rd birthday committed to figuring out like, how do you love yourself? Yeah. How do you believe in yourself? How are you confident in yourself? And even with that, it's, I didn't even publish it until I was 26. Yeah. So, you know, and people are always like, well, how old are you now? And I'm like, yeah, it took me three years to believe it was worth it. Yeah. It's an ongoing journey. And I remember at my official book release party, I was surrounded by family and friends and people who've known me since I was a kid and they're all like I always knew something like this would happen for you like I always knew you would be really really big and I'm like I didn't yeah I didn't see myself in that light and you know just hearing the stories and I'm like you know, I remember these stories, but I didn't see myself in that viewpoint. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely one of those things that's A, a work in progress, but mm-hmm. B, learning to just say, you know, I am capable of doing absolutely anything I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think for me, that turning point was um, surviving the grief of my miscarriage with my twins. Yeah. And to go through something so traumatic when, um, I I came out of that realizing, like, if I can get through that, I can get through anything. Yeah. That's what created the unstoppable feeling. And it's unfortunate that it had to be something so severe. Um, But in an odd way, I'm really thankful for that, for the lesson that came from it and being able to say, like, I'm absolutely, like, nothing can stop me at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, So from that perspective, when did you realize what your dream was and decided to go after it? Hmm. Well, I just created the blog this year. Um, I think the ideas have been playing around in my mind um, for a while. And I think, you know, I would say that the year, I would say the year my ex and I separated um, was really like my low. And that's when I really started the work of um, learning about self-love. And um, I went through a process where I've always been someone who believes in affirmations and, um, you know, uh, that's been a part of my spiritual practice since I was a child, but I really like, I guess went hard with it, if you will, uh, because I, I needed to. It was kind of out of a necessity of, I have um, a prayer wall and, and it was like, I was so, I was, I was really hating myself and beating myself up for everything that had gone wrong in our, in our marriage. And it was like, I just needed to write some things or just find some affirmations that spoke to me and just like repeat them over and over every morning during my my morning prayers until I started to believe them Mm -hmm. and um that was the biggest turning point for me like um the power of manifestation it just really really helped a lot it was like there I I wasn't believing it for a while so I just kept repeating them every single day until they finally felt true and rang true and then became true. And so I knew there was something there after that. And I think that's when I just was like toying around with the idea. And then, uh, you know, going through all the business development that I learned through um, my work with Stella and Dot, you know, that was a really empowering and still is a really empowering experience and just surrounding myself with like-minded women who are really supportive. And so, and then like also being in the sorority, same thing, you know, like our chapter is full of so many like legendary women, you know, Um, you (laughs) included. (laughs) Yeah. So I feel like I, you know, it's kind of just like divine order, like life like you said life puts everything in place and it, it you're just on this journey and it and you start to see things and how they all align um so yeah that's kind of the, the trajectory of how it happened but i didn't actually really like create the blog until this year 
So I'm still a baby blogger. <laughs> Fair enough. One of the things that you mentioned that um, I would like to highlight is you were saying about the power of manifestation. Um, I absolutely agree with you there. I actually was just having a conversation with someone about that today. Ooh. The question was, um, what are your likes and what are your dislikes? And so, um, you know, I was able to answer the things that I like and, oh, I like this and, oh, I like that and da 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 da. And I was like, I honestly don't have a list of my dislikes and my response was like I believe what you focus on will grow mm -hmm. I try not to put energy on things that don't make me happy I want to focus mm -hmm. on what's making me happy what's going right what am I enjoying about life like and so personally I deal with um chronic uh, depression mm -hmm. and so one of my maintenance activities that I've started for myself is a gratitude journal. Yes. Hey, I write, I like, I force myself even on the worst days. I'm like, okay, something good had to happen today. Yeah. And I write it down. And, and you know, when things are rough, I'm like, okay, cool. When things are rough at work, I'm like, okay, what, what were those days that I had a good day? You know, let me write down those and really just focusing on the good instead mm -hmm. of the bad. Yeah. But I yeah. do recognize that sometimes it's really difficult to stay motivated, mm -hmm. uh, particularly when you're in a field where you pour into others so often. So what are some of the things or um, who are some of the people that keep you motivated? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I definitely can say, I just want to kind of go back to what you were saying really quickly and then I'll answer the question um, that, you know, I, I've learned how much energy it takes for when I'm constantly pouring into others. I think that I am someone who is known for um, having that uplifting positive mentality. I believe that a strength of mine is being able to find the silver lining even in um, rough situations and so a lot of like my circle will come to me for that they'll be like okay this is what's going on yes I need you to tell me what's positive about this you know um, and so you know I had I definitely went through a season just this you know past few months of kind of feeling depleted and having to figure out how do I rejuvenate myself um, so that I can continue this work and so some of, I'm still kind of actually figuring all of that out, but some of the things that I've learned is um, I've had to really take control of my schedule. I'm someone who's always doing something. And I realize that I need at least like one weekend a month where I'm doing nothing and I'm not going anywhere and I'm just at home, you know, sleeping. <laughs> I need some time to catch up on sleep. Um, planning and just being by myself. So, you know, now I kind of have, I'm working on blocking off on an entire weekend to, of no, nothing's happening this weekend. This is like my rejuvenation weekend. Um, I have a lot of, I get a lot of inspiration from a lot of places. Another thing that I do that's actually become a routine now um, is I listen to podcasts every single day on my commute. So my commute to and from work is about an hour each way. And so I have made that so enjoyable now by always having a podcast downloaded and ready to go. Um, and they vary. I listen to a lot of business podcasts. So my faves would be like my leak teal. Love her. Um, I love side hustle pro. I, um, I also enjoy like, Courtney Sanders, Think and Grow Chick, um, Happy Black Woman, things like that. So that's like on the business side. I listen to education podcasts from like NPR to, um, I'm trying to think right now. There's so many, like, I've, I'm like a nerd. I love to learn. I have a lot of different, I also just recently got into like um, the Oprah Super Soul Sunday has a podcast now. So I can listen to those. Um, there's this one quote, one that I recently got introduced to that I listen to every day. It's like a quote of the day in the morning by Sean Croxon, I think. So anyway, podcasts are a huge source of inspiration for me. Um, I also 
like I had on my Instagram account, I just follow a lot of people. So it's even hard to like pick who stands out because um, I follow so many different people. I also watch a lot of YouTube, mm -hmm. which is I'm trying to like, that's one thing I'm like, I love, I love it. And there are a lot of people who I love watching, but I also have to get things done. So I can't right. spend my whole night watching YouTube. Right. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of ways. I'm very clear about what um what kind of media i consume and that making sure that that's always something positive for sure and i i also have an hour commute to work so i definitely understand um i typically use youtube but it's like playing through my car gotcha. um, as i'm driving to work so i'm not actually watching it um but i do i'm yeah. listening to sermons mm -hmm. um, some of my favorite motivational speakers are Lisa Nichols. Yeah. Um, Oprah is like the queen of, of course. motivational speakers, for sure. Ayana, can't say her last name. <laughs> Van Zandt? Um, yes, yeah, she, yeah. she's good too. Um, some of my favorite sermons are from, um, I consider myself virtual members of Transformations Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. And One Church LA and also House of, um, Potter's House of Denver, um, both under Sarah Jakes Roberts and her husband, uh, Torrey Roberts. Sarah's my favorite though. Nice. Uh, <laughs> but just listening to those is definitely some of the ways and like you said on social media making sure that you're following people who are gonna like uplift you yes is definitely key and I am quick to unfollow um mm -hmm. stagnant or unproductive social mm -hmm. pages um some of because I just don't need that energy in my life yes energy is so important Oh, it absolutely is, for sure. So if you could go back and tell your teenage self one thing, what would it be? <laughs> I always laugh because I feel like it's a little bit embarrassing, but my answer to this question is always just say no. Okay. Um, there are definitely some things that I have said yes to growing up that I should not have said yes to. Um, and granted, you know, I always, I always want to be someone who's like, I don't regret anything because it's made me who I am today. Right. Um, but I definitely made some mistakes and I think that I got very caught up in saying yes to a lot of things because I had convinced myself, like, let's say it, in dealing with, um, you know, guys, for example, I had convinced myself that, um, in order for someone to like you, you have to, you have to do certain things or say certain things or be a certain way um, that were not aligned to who I actually am. So I spent a lot of time as a teenager and a young adult trying to change who I was um, just to get someone to like me. Um, so yeah, I would, I would say, just say no. And like saying you can be yourself and still be loved and it's okay and i love that you said that honestly i think it's very important lesson that so many people don't learn um and even within the context of dating and you know things like that but even with just simple requests like mm -hmm. no has become such a curse word in our society um and i don't really understand why um, yeah. So funny story. I remember um, I lived in Charlotte for about two and a half years. And when I was moving back to Maryland, um, I had a bedroom set that I was just giving away to one of my friends for free. Didn't ask for any money. All you had to do was come pick it up from the apartment. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember he was, and it was a guy, by the way, mm -hmm. and he was like, are you going to help me carry it down? And I was like, no. <laughs> Mind you, like, this is, like, the last week I'm in the apartment. I got things I got to do. You know, I think I was, like, scrub. You know, you have to deep clean the, the bathroom before you mm -hmm. leave. Yes. I'm, I'm, like, deep cleaning the bathroom, and no. So he literally took down, like, a couple of drawers and then came back up and was, like, you really aren't going to help me? I said no. Like, <laughs> what? Why yeah. are you so surprised right now? Like, I meant no. I'm in the middle of things, and... 
I'm sorry. You're just going to have to accept the free furniture for what it is. And yeah. Do. Like, I, I, I don't. You were shook. It was <laughs> shook. Like, no. Yeah. <laughs> but what I've learned is, A, no is such a freeing experience because it gives you the ability to decide for yourself what you are or are not willing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but even beyond that, your yeses have value when they know no was an option. Yeah. Um, if I know you're just going to say yes, like, I'm not really excited about you saying yes. Like, <laughs> yeah. But your no creates value for your yes. And your no allows you to have space to say yes to something that you are interested in doing or something that has a little bit more importance to you. Mm -hmm. Uh, But what I've learned is the hardest no to give is to family. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I love my family. But sometimes I have to say no. Yeah, it's definitely hard to say no to the people that you care about most. But I agree with you that it is really empowering when you, you know, you use your voice to just stand up for yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's still, it's definitely a work in progress. Um, yeah, me too. And, but, but it, I, I de- there's some areas where like, I'm like really good now at saying no, yeah. like I have no problem. And then there's still other areas, like depends on, you know, the person, if you will, that you, you know, it still becomes a struggle. For sure. And sometimes that, um, I love to say no at work. (laughs) I get such an emotional charge from telling people a professional no. (laughs) Like, they'll be like, oh, Tia, can you? No, I'm actually working on something. Yeah. It has nothing to do with my area of responsibility. I had to do that the other day at work, and I was so nervous about it. Yeah. But I had gotten to a point where I was just like, you know, I was, I was like, I have to say no, I cannot fulfill this request mm-hmm. at this time because I have a conflict. Right. And I was, I remember going like, okay, what is this person going to think and this that, and the other. And, you know, I was firm. I said my no. And the person was like, okay. And changed it. Mm-hmm. Right. And it was fine. And it's like, we, we have all this buildup in our minds that like the world is going to end if we tell exactly. someone no. And, and then it doesn't. Exactly. And I think that's why it's such a freeing experience. Um, I remember listening to Oprah telling a story about when she started saying no. Um, she was like the first person she said no to was Quincy Jones. Mm. Like, how do you say no to Quincy Jones? Like, you just don't. Like, that's just not a thing. And he's going to hate me, and he's going to put me on the blackball list. And yeah. you know, all, all of the thoughts that kind of ran through her head. And um, when she told him no for whatever, I forgot what the request was, but when she told him no, he was just like, okay. <laughs> like, yes, I know. When you have to say yes to everything. Yeah. I really don't care. Like. Like for me personally, if I ask you a question, I'm one of those people that if you tell me no, I'm one of those people like, okay, like, because I'd rather you say no than yeah. yes and do it half-heartedly. Or yeah. Say, oh my gosh. Do it. Or say yes and resent me for doing it. Mm-hmm. The answer is no, the answer is no. Like, yeah. I completely agree because then it's like, okay, I can move on. Whereas if you say yes, and then let's say like, I'm going to follow up with you. And now I feel like I'm chasing you down because now you're avoiding me because you really didn't want to do it in the first place. If you had just said no, then I could just move on to the next and like, keep it moving. I, I definitely wish that we could empower more people to just be okay with saying no. Oh, right. We're going to start a campaign. Just say no. (laughs) (laughs) yes just say no numerous different directions but we gotta get comfortable with saying no because Mm -hmm. at the end of the day I truly believe that saying no creates the space and opportunity to say yes to so much more yeah agreed for sure um so what projects are you currently working on oh my goodness so I think the first thing is that I'm just trying to get to a place where I'm consistently uploading to my blog. Um, So 
you know, being a blogger and just learning about that. Like, I feel like I'm so late, you know, late because blogging has been around for a long time, but that's the initial project. And then I also am really interested in um, starting a YouTube channel. I technically have one and have like three old videos on it, but because I like love watching YouTube, I love the idea of just like recording content. Um, so that's the next thing. Um, and then I have, I have a vision for where I want to go um, with the brand and like what I want to do with it. I'm just not sure if that's going to be this year or next year. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if I should say yet. Because <laughs> it's so we'll talk you know. offline about that one. <laughs> Yes, yes. But I do, I do have a lot of ideas about what I want to do. Um, you know, I will, I think I can share one dream that I do have. And I, I've just this year become more comfortable with saying it out loud. Um, because I'm someone who I do think I need to say things out loud in order to Thank hold you. myself accountable. I know a lot of people are like, don't talk about your dreams out loud. And I've tried that. But I think when I, when I do talk about them with people, it becomes more real for me. Mm -hmm. And that's just me personally. So one of my dreams, and it's like one of those like big scary ones for me, but I've always, always, always wanted to write a children's book. Yay! Even like a series. Yay! Yeah. So I, out, of, <laughs> out of this brand, I do hope to one day become um, a children's author. And I want to create books that when you know, our young kids read them, they're centered around being confident and feeling good about themselves and they can pick out lessons from that and stuff. So that's like a long-term goal. Oh my God, I can't no, believe we're that making so that shorter, no ma'am. I mean, well, I mean long-term, like within the next five years. <laughs> no, like next five months. Oh, okay. <laughs> By the end of this year. Oh, I don't know if I'm ready for it this oh, year. you're ready for it. I promise <laughs> you. I will be your mentor if you need such. I oh. Because I think it's so, that's such an important thing. Like, I remember um, the book, um, Loving the, the Skin I'm In was the title of the mm -hmm. book. I read After that book. Elementary school, and that book has sat with me. We're talking 20 plus years mm -hmm. that that book has really sat with me. And the author was speaking from a, um, a place of being dark skin, but mm -hmm. I really resonated from a place of being really, really light. Yeah. Um, especially when I'm the lightest thing in my family. Yeah. Um, and actually, you saw my grandmother at the Women's Empower Empowerment event. Like, my whole family is her complexion. And then there's me. Um, yeah. I have, my grandmother's one of 21, and all of them have children. So we go to family reunions, and you're like, you're Tina's daughter, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's me. Who are you? Like, nice. You know what I mean? Like, everyone knows who I am because I stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah. Um, when I think about children's books centered around self confidence and self love, it's such a necessary thing. Yeah. And anything that I can do to help that become a reality, I would love to see that come true, but it doesn't have to be five years. It's, <laughs> it really does not. And we will talk about how to make this a reality for you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> no problem. So do you have any final thoughts for us? Hmm. I think that as I'm, you know, still building out my business and um, the message that I want to send, I, even though I'm talking about confidence as, it, as if it's a place that, you know, I've gotten to, I... I really want to always remind people that it's actually a journey and it's not, um, not a hard destination where like you're going to be confident in every area of your life. I still have insecurities. There are still things that I am working through. And, um, so, you know, I just want to give people like the grace to, you know, have grace with themselves and not thinking that you have to be confident in every facet of your life. Like you can master one area and be like, wow, okay, I really feel good about myself in this area and still be working on another area, you know? So I always tell people, give yourself grace, 
and um, just, you know, hang on for the ride. It's a journey, it's a beautiful journey of self-discovery, but especially when you love yourself and you can start owning who you are and not having to apologize for being who you are. Absolutely. I love that. Where you said, give yourself grace. I think I'm going to go write that on my mirror right now. Oh, yay. Because that's definitely something I struggle with. I am my biggest critic. Me too. I am. We all critic. are. <laughs> um, and so a lot of times, like, and I'm so thankful for my sister, Sora, and my best friend. Um, we're kind of like life partners, which... Mm -hmm. It's really odd for a friendship, but she's my like my friend soulmate. Yeah, I call I call them my soul sisters. I have a very few, yeah, but there are definitely people in my life. I'm like, you're my soul sister. Absolutely, and that's exactly what it is. And um, but she's very good about reminding me to give myself grace. Um, that's a new phrase that I'm gonna add into that mix. But just the concept of like, sis, slow down. Yeah. Okay it's okay, sis, you're working too hard, mm -hmm. like, even just last night, um, we were texting, and I was like, I'm so sleepy, and she's like, go to sleep, <laughs> I'm gonna walk at night, and she's like, okay, go to sleep, you know, and she holds me accountable to taking weekly Sabbaths, um, every, once a week, for one day, I shut off from the world, yeah. and I do very minimum work, and yeah. I give myself permission to take naps and things like that, and she's constantly like, okay, so when's your Sabbath this week? Yeah. You taking on another project? <laughs> when you gonna do that, though? Yeah. And so, she is uh, the one who is constantly expelling grace for me. Yeah. Uh, give me very honest feedback, too, so... <laughs> Don't get that misconstrued. Um, but learning to do that for myself too, and learning to be able to say, "You did good," you know, like you're doing great, and, yes. and forgive myself for the mistakes that I am making. Like I make mistakes all the time. Same. To you know, say to yourself, like, it's okay. Yeah. So how can we find you on the many social media or website platforms? <laughs> so my website is www.iamconfidentlyme.com. And then I am most active on Instagram. And my Instagram handle is confidentlydina. Um, and Dina is spelled D-E-E-N-A. Um, I do have the handle I am confidently me on Instagram, but I haven't posted there yet. So um, you can find me at Confidently Dina. And yeah, that's where I am. Awesome. So thank you so much for sharing your dream with us. Um, I really hope it inspires someone to who's kind of going through that same place and wanting to be a part of something bigger and give back to the world in, the, in, a, in their own unique way, for sure. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for being a part of us. And thank guys, you for having me. Absolutely. So, guys, I want everyone to comment below one thing that you're confident with yourself in. Um, and so I'm definitely going to be reading the comments. Dina, I'm going to tag you to the post. Yes. Definitely. We'll be a part of the conversation. Um, and when I post, I'm actually going to share something that I'm confident with. And hopefully, Dina, you will be willing to do so as well. I will, for sure. I'll be excited to read everyone's comments. I know. I'm going to be reading it like, oh, my God, this is so cool. Yeah. I guess both of your thoughts and share something that you're confident in yourself in. Um, and again, thank you so much for being a part of Motivational Monday. Thank you for having me. It was so great talking with you. Of course, of course. Thank you.